Loki i Tomek Skanatani. Good morning. It is just about 10:30 in the a.m. on Tuesday, the 1 of September, the 1st, 2020, in the lunar cycle. Buckeepists oats at dates be when the choke cherries ripen. And I'm on the road this morning en route to pick up a raccoon that I trapped on the south side of town here. Not my first work of the of the day. I did get up a little bit earlier and go fetch a skunk on the north side. But in general, small mammal calls, well the trapping work anyway, has been a little bit slow. Slowing down. Uh, we have had an interesting badger event going on around town that I'll talk about maybe a little bit later. But we'll get the day going with this raccoon. Um, not sure if it'll be a busy round. If so, we'll make it into a video as such. If not, we're going to get into some of the gems of August because I know I have at least two or three snake pickup footage clips to, uh, to share that I haven't already. And probably some other stuff as well. Anyhow, let's get it going. Hey there, friend. How's it going? Yeah, you got stuck yourself in a trap. But I'm gonna get you out of there. been since I think before my eye injury um, since I've stopped off at the intake canal here for the city to look at what the beaver situation is doing I, I absolutely ceased all of my beaver work activity when uh, let's let this raccoon out first I guess he doesn't need to be sitting in the back while we look at the beaver stuff um, yeah, I ceased all of my beaver activity. I think the last time I was here, I was throwing a grappling hook trying to get clear some of the logs and such. And uh, noticed that there was a, a dead beaver among the log, log jam, a carcass. Hey, buddy, you ready to get out of there? I bet. I bet. Let's get you out. Boom like a light <laughs> yeah there was a beaver carcass in the log jam and one of my neighbors a couple doors down from me he works with the crew that came out to clear the log jam and uh, he knew that I was busy on this project at one point but he came to, to let me know that while they were clearing it, there was a beaver. Actually, I should go on this other side because that's where, if there's going to be beaver lodge work started, it's going to be on this other side. Anyway, he told me that uh, when they were last, well, when they were clearing the log jam, um, there was a beaver swimming around here, the one that had its den against the edge here that I had been. Um, deconstructing as the as the season uh, came in but yeah look at this okay so this is the current situation let's see what we got happening here
does not look as though there are any new beaver dens. Um, wouldn't hurt to clear some of this debris. <laughs> That's something I can do pretty easy just swimming in there. But yeah, I'm not seeing any beaver lodges. Look at this. I don't think these are active lodges this high up on the shoreline. But you never know. I should keep an eye out here anyway. And we should go look at the canal proper. Now these, these might be active. See, I need to come here in the evening and see if there's any beaver moving around, either in the evening or early morning. But we'll keep an eye out, make sure that the winter food cache doesn't start growing here. And I don't think, I don't think he's, he's lodged up here because I think he'd be, by now, reconstructing, you know, the lodge proper. Let's go take a little look at what's going on in the canal itself. Yeah, this still looks good. Still looks good. Runny nose this morning. Allergies. Now there was definitely a lodge an old lodge in the canal proper. It could be that our beaver from the, the intake there moved over to this old lodge because we did see a beaver when I was last working it trying to trap along this way uh, kind of hanging out by the old lodge. Let's see. Here. <laughs> Some materials, but doesn't look like anything new to speak of. Let's go a little ways up here. And again, I think it comes down to I'm gonna have to come check it out in the evening. Be a good evening trek to take the kids out on, you know, let them help me survey for the beavers. It's looking, looking pretty clear. I'm not seeing like any beaver debris along the edges, you know, no, no bits of willow or anything like that. It looks like something happened here. I wonder if they deconstructed a beaver lodge right here too. I'm betting they did. I'm betting they did. I'm betting they took a backhoe and just ripped that lodge right out of the side here, hey? probably back around the same time as they were doing that other one. And that will definitely do it, you know, in part as a deterrent. I'm still curious what happened to the live beavers that were here, beaver, beavers, whether they are still lingering or have decided to move on. So, oh, I just seen something pop up out of the water over here. Might have been a muskrat, might have been a mink, something curious. It was right down in here. Let's go down to the shoreline and take a look. Where this is where we were seeing leopard frogs as I was trapping down here. Yeah, I just saw something surface right by this log. Just kind of surface, turn, and go down. I can see across the way there's some 
little bit of reeds over there on the shoreline that have been munched by one of those muskrat or or uh, mink, not sure. <laughs> Probably muskrat, given it's vegetable. <laughs> Anyway, I guess that's it for the beaver scene. Um, good to note what's going on. Now I feel like I can contact my buddy Stuart and Parks and see what their thoughts are on it. I still haven't even collected from the work that I did for them, so I've got to do that as well. But I want to keep monitoring here and make sure the beavers don't move back in. Um, Hopefully, this is the only place where they've ripped out lodges because I know that there were a couple of other areas that they were looking at so-called problem beavers for for their uh, impact on the river edge forest, but especially in the Alexander Wilderness Park. But man, it's a wilderness park. That's the wild stuff. Let it do its thing. I don't know. I have to get out and around again now that my eye is kind of back to as much look at this yeah they ripped the beaver lodge out they eh? this is the beaver lodge right here they ripped this one out which is what you know i think exactly what they should do really rip that lodge out and uh deter the beavers rather than trapping and, and killing dozens of them, you know. So I'm cool with this so far, what I'm seeing. It looks like they did what I, you know, would struggle to do barehanded. And I wasn't getting anywhere quick. All right, so we'll move on. I got a couple of traps that haven't been hitting, uh, that have been out for a month or two. I'm going to go pick those up, and if I haven't got any calls yet, I'll go back home and we'll, we'll see where to go from there. Alright, it is noon o'clock. I picked up one of my large traps that I had set for a porcupine on the south side of town, but it hadn't been hitting, and it's been out a while. Pulled that just in case I actually need to set a trap for one of the badgers that has been sighted around town. The thing is, over the last three, four days, I've received, and especially yesterday, yesterday I think I, I received maybe five or six different reports of badgers running through people's yards, all different sides of town, all kind of along green strips or along the coulee edges and that kind of thing, but even like green strips along the highway. I guess there was one in the London Road area, which is pretty far down, you know, into the midst of the, the South End subdivisions. Um, and my first kind of guess at what might have been happening was that maybe this was the time when the young male um, badgers born this year are kind of off finding their own territories. That was just a guess. but. Uh, somebody else noted that this is actually the time of year when badgers are mating, which I didn't know. I thought that they mated probably around the same time as skunks who were closely re related to them who mate later in winter. But no, badgers um, toward the end of summer, early fall is when they're doing their mating. So very likely what's going on in town here is a, is a badger mating event. Everybody that's called me, I've been advising them just to relax let the badger pass through their yard it's not going to stick around uh, if it you know if it trenches in or something that's a different story if you got a ground squirrel colony in your backyard you know you're asking for it in a way um, but then maybe the badger will be helpful for you like the badger's not going to come after anybody or after their pets or anything like this right it's not there to cause trouble um, as usual, people just get scared when they see an animal in their reality. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, while I was picking up that trap, I got a call from the University of Lethbridge. They have a rattlesnake basking in one of their parking lots. So we are going to go over to the University of Lethbridge parking lot G and see if we can pick up a snake. Hello. Hello. They're all here to watch. They're really <laughs> right on. Side. This process or watching. So we're on your side? Yeah, on my side here. Like how often do you have to do this? Oh, pretty often. <laughs> that time that they're trying to move. Yeah. Down in the way. Usually we're going to get our call here soon. Yeah, hey, you guys got, <laughs> Dave came out and trained you yeah. guys, hey? Yeah, we're under the city permit now. Cool. Yeah, good size snake. Hey, buddy. It's a big upset male. Did not like his travel in the bucket. Very upset. I wanted to get a little hands on with him, but he's not happy. So we're going to move him off the trail at least. Back to the den site over here. Yeah, he's, he's lunging and being mad. Yeah, keep going that way. Keep going that way. One in. There you go. Not a happy snake at all. <laughs> he was so relaxed back there by the parking lot. Oh well. Well, that's one snake call for the day. We'll see if we get more. Well, it's turning out to be a busy day after all. It's just past one o'clock in the afternoon now. Not even an hour has passed since we were at the university with that rattlesnake. And we have rattlesnake call number two. See, I think what's going on here is that they're heading back to the dens. They're starting their migration. We had a, a little bit of a cold snap the other day. Like it was, it was cold and damp and rainy on Sunday. I even wore pants. You know, that was the first day of the season that I wore pants. So, and that was what, August 30th. So yeah, the snakes are the snakes know they got to get on the move now and they're doing that and they're getting caught up in the neighborhood. So this one's in Riverstone on Grand River Boulevard. Uh, it was on the road, now it's off the road and into some grass, but I have somebody watching it for me. Um, that's snake concern, wants to make sure it doesn't get hit by a car and all that stuff, which I super appreciate. So rushing there as quick as the Lethbridge roads can take me. And we'll go pick up snake number two for this round.
<laughs> How goes it? Thanks for hanging at the scene. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I came around the corner and that's how I pretty much found him. Oh yeah. See? yeah. Straight in the middle of the road. There. Yeah, they're they're migrating. Yeah. Yeah, they have yeah, that little cold spell. I think they're just headed back to the dens now, you know. trip back to the den. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's very cool to see that there's still rattlesnakes flourishing somewhat in Riverstone after having had at least a couple of their dens in the area molested. What a pretty girl this one is. I've been to their dens. I've seen uh, in their rookeries that they are females who have probably had babies by now. I'm not even going to walk over that way because oh, you don't have to be so upset. See a little strike there. Not even going to go over by any of the dens or rookeries that I know of because um, I don't know somebody in this area is a jerk, so wants to wants to bother the snakes. That person is probably in for some uh, legal trouble down the line eventually if it continues. But as for now, we'll just keep things away from the dens and rookeries on video. Always picking up my t-shirt now with the hook, avoiding the chance of getting venom on my fingers. <laughs> so that's snake number two. Guess we'll see if there's going to be a third. Okay, it is officially migration day. As far as I'm concerned, the snakes are on the move. It is coming on 1600 hours, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm off on my fifth snake call. I did not cover three and four because they weren't successful. The first one brought me to an address on Heritage Boulevard where a, a large snake, four to five feet long, slithering across the road had been seen. Uh, I couldn't find the snake. Went home a little bit later, I got another call from Heritage Circle where someone had almost run over most likely the same bull snake uh, is what I'm assuming. So I think there's a bull snake on the move in Heritage that constitutes calls three and four for today even though it's just one snake. Any case, we got another rattlesnake at the University of Lethbridge. And this one is in a weird place. Uh-oh, let's see what this uh, call is now. It's Rattlesnake Hotline. Hello. Hi, Brian. I got Jill on the line. She gave you the wrong address. Can we put her through? Uh, sure. Thanks. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Ryan. It's Jill with Security Services. You ever okay. say hey? Southside? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Are you there yet? No, I'm. I'm just leaving. I'm just on the north side. I'm like the furthest point out from you guys. So. Oh, good. I'm so glad I caught you before you got here because he just radioed in. I'm like north side, right? He's like, no, no, south side. My bad. And I'm like, oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's why I thought north side sounded really odd, but south yes. side makes a lot of sense for a patio and all that stuff. So, okay. There's a lot more sun over there. There we go, and it's yeah. and it's in in the route, you know, from the 
student residencies to the to the den site. So it makes yeah. total sense. They're they're migrating today. This is like, oh. this is like my fifth snake call today. Oh, today's the day. How, is this going to be all week or what? Well, it's going to be, yeah, probably for a few warm days here anyway. Okay, good to know. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. Yeah. See you soon. Take care. Bye. 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 Well, there we go. Okay. Hi, Ryan. It's security again. Hey. That snake has moved under the stairs and is inaccessible. Oh, okay. All right, I'm just crossing the river now, so I'll, I'll turn back if it shows up again. Well, it's it's going to, it's making its way back to the dens. That's what's going yeah. on. Yeah. So. Oh, do you want us to kind of wait it out a little bit and see what they do when they show up the next couple of days or what? If, it, if it's not in a super high traffic area, like the side of that building there, if, if they kept like a, a little distance from it and saw what it did, I bet it's just going back to the den. Okay, I will, uh, I'll keep that in mind, and I will also pass it on, like we're on again tomorrow, but I'll pass it on to the crews that are coming on the rest of this week as well. Okay, but I'm totally okay. available, though, if, if, you know, if they need a, if it's in, like, today it was in the, it, it, the one that I picked up was in the parking lot, so for sure if it's something yeah. like that, you know. Yeah, I will, uh, yeah, yeah, I will, if we need you, we'll call you. Cool. Okay, thanks a lot, sorry about that. No worries. Okay, bye-bye. Snake number five aborted. <laughs> or snake number four, call number five.